welcome to Community Talk. My name is Gloria Cumston, and I am the Teen Librarian at the Enid Public Library. And this is my guest today, Jenny Regeer, who is our brand new children's librarian at the Public Library. We are so happy to have her. We're going to talk to you a little bit today about our summer reading program. We've been offering a summer reading program at the Public Library for many years, just as an incentive to encourage children to read during the summer. It's so important that kids continue to read during the summer in order to keep those reading skills that they've worked so hard on all school year, to keep those strong and to be able to start the school year as strong as they finished the previous year. So we offer programs and incentives to get the kids into the library and we're going to talk to you a little bit about the different things that your child can do at the library this summer. Some really great things about that. The library has good air conditioning. It's always cool at the library in the summer. And all the programs are free. So Jenny, you want to tell us a little bit about what you're offering the elementary students? I'm so excited about what's happening at the public library this summer. Our theme is Every Hero Has a Story. And so it's really all about superheroes and making sure that our kids um, keep those reading skills that you were talking about up. Uh, our kickoff party is next Friday, June the 5th, and we're going to have some really amazing things happening. Um, I think live music and snow cones, and then we're going to have programs for elementary students. Um, I believe, let me check the calendar. Um, we have superhero training camps on Tuesday and Wednesday of every week and we're going to have different things every week. Um, the first week we're going to do an obstacle course and the students are going to have to run through and pretend that they're superheroes and get their superhero training skills up and it's going to be really fantastic. I'm very excited about it. Oh, well, that sounds great. Mm -hmm. Really great. So the summer reading kickoff is going to be in conjunction with the first Friday downtown? Yes, that's my understanding. All right. Well, that'll be great. I think there are going to be all kinds of fun things going on down there. And in fact, we'll have superheroes wandering around at our program for kids can take photo ops. We'll have um, a photo booth, actually, that they can do pictures and face painting all kinds of fun things. I think that'll be great. So you can begin registering for summer reading um, now at the library. We've already begun that registration. Um, you can register at the first Friday at the kickoff or any time after that. We're going to be offering all kinds of incentives and, pri and prizes. We have some big programs, some family programs that we're going to be offering and these will be held at Convention Hall. And we're going to start off with Animal Tales and this is an animal group from Kentucky and they're going to be bringing a baby kangaroo which is pretty awesome and there'll be a boa constrictor there is a hornbill I'm not even sure what that is exactly there's going to be a fruit bat and there's going to be a falcon. Have you ever seen a fruit bat before Gloria? I have not ever seen a fruit bat before. <laughs> I'm kind of excited about that. I I don't even know what they look like, but I'm pretty excited about oh, that Oh, yes, too. me too. In fact, I'd not seen a baby kangaroo before mm -hmm. until this same group came last year. <gasps> Very fun. But that's the only animal they're bringing that's a repeat from last mm -hmm. year. And they'll um, let the kids touch the animals and see the animals in action. So I'm very excited about that. We're going to have an, one other repeat performer from last year. His name is Richard Holmgren, and he goes by Flying Debris. He does juggling. He rides a unicycle. He's very funny, um, very, very entertaining. Last year, he put a bowling ball on his foot, and then he kicked the bowling ball up and caught it <gasps> right behind his neck. Now, I'm not sure why he wanted to do that, because I think it would have hurt a lot but he did and it was amazing. Can you imagine the practicing skills that he must have had to have gotten that done? Holy cow. Can you imagine the headaches no. from practicing I that? I can't even. Oh my gosh, I can't either. It's just, oh. That's amazing. Something, yes. And then, so the, um, let's see, we're also going to have another juggler, juggle whatever. They're going to come and they're going to teach kids to juggle. They're gonna spin plates. They're going to juggle scarves. We're also going to have a drummer, Mark Shelton, is going to come. He has drums from that he's collected from all over the world. Um, one that I was really interested in was a steel drum that he plays a tune on. And then 
after the performance for the family, he's going to do a drum circle just for teens. Oh, that's so amazing. So the teens can stay, and he's going to pass out his instruments and put together a drum circle. So we're really excited about that. And then um, we're also going to have a talent show. This is something we've done in years past, and last year we did not. And the children were not happy. So we're going to once again have a talent show. So kids who have talents can um, come and audition for that. And that will also be happening in June. We're going to have a comic con. Uh, I know kids could dress up as their favorite superheroes or any kind of characters. I know I've talked to some teens who really want to dress up as anime characters, and I'm excited about that. So, Do you have a plan for how you're going to dress up, Gloria? Now, I have my costume for the kickoff. I do have my cape, and I do have my plan for that. I do not necessarily think I'm going to use the same contest costume for the contest in Comic-Con. Uh -huh. So we'll see about that. But we're going to have an art contest, we're going to have a costume contest, we'll have trivia, prizes, all kinds of fun things for that. So uh, it's going to be a great time. We had the, working with the theme of superheroes has just been so much fun. The planning has been easy and just really fun to do. Awesome. I'm very excited um, simply because I think it's made it very easy to come in, you know, because this is only my second day. And so it's been very fun to come in and kind of brainstorm about what the students and what the kids are going to like to do. Um, and is particularly with all of the superhero movies that are out right now, tying into all of those things makes what we're doing very, very timely, and I think that's important. And you're going to be doing some superhero movies. Yes, we are. Um, every Monday of the week, we will be screening a superhero movie at the library. I believe the first one that we're going to do is The Incredibles, and I'm very excited about that because it's my favorite superhero movie. But yeah, lots of superhero movies. I'm very excited. Awesome. And so we're going to have prizes that the kids can earn by reading. They'll keep a reading log all summer long and write down the books that they read. They'll bring it into the library each week and get a stamp and a prize. We have all kinds of fun superhero prizes. We're going to start off with little superhero rubber ducks. So that will be really fun. Um, then at the end of the summer at the cool down party, July 22nd, they'll bring their reading logs in. They will get their name in the, in the prize drawing. We're going to be giving away an iPad mini, some cool Lego sets, some superhero standees that are decorating the library right now, and some lots of books. And those things we'll be giving away at the cool down party. So we have a set of prizes for the children. Yes. We have another set of prizes for the teens. Yes. And another set of prizes for the adults. We don't want to leave the adults out there. There's adult programming for summer also. They have some puzzle things that they can fill out, some bingo forms. Um, they have a couple of craft activities. One of those is decoupage comic book shoes that re they're really oh, cute. Oh, I've seen those. Those are on display in the library. They're on, they on are display, amazing. Yes. I kind of want to go to that because I need some superhero shoes. Yes, adults and older teens can participate in that. So if we're not trying to leave the adults out, there'll be prizes for them as well as prizes for the teens and kids. All of the children, um, in fact, we visited every school in Enid and several of the area schools during May. And so all of the children had the opportunity to come home with a flyer that looks like this. On the back is the calendar and times of all of the activities. And um, teens are in one color, children's another. The family programs are in another co color. So lots of opportunities of things to do during June and July at the library. There are also phone numbers and a website um, and email addresses in case you have questions about things that are happening at the library. So we're hoping that everyone has an opportunity to come out and participate in our summer reading program. Do you have anything else that you want to talk about? Uh, no. Before I, we let them go? I think you did a terrific job. You were fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> All right, well, we hope we see all of you at the library this summer. I'm Gloria Cumston, the teen librarian. This is my guest, Jenny Regeer, the children's librarian, and we hope we see all of you at the library this summer. Thank you very much. I'm 
Brenda Bingham with the Blue Star Mothers, and I have with me today Karen Ballman. She is our recording secretary, and we would like to share some things about the Blue Star Mothers today. Karen, can you start off with our meetings and? Okay, we have two meetings a month. Our business meetings the second Thursday of the month at 6:30, and our packing meeting is the fourth Thursday at 6:30, and it's at the Oakwood Mall there at our store. And we'd like for y'all to come and visit us. We need a lot of visitors. We enjoy people. That's right. And if you have a soldier or a troop that is over in harm's way, we would love to have his address so that we could send care packages, right? And I've got a little information about our custom forms now. Uh, we can go ahead and use the custom forms we have now. But in June, the custom forms are changing. Oh, my. Again. Uh, we just got that from the, from the post office that we take our boxes to. Okay. I just got that little bit of information this morning. Uh huh. Good. So, uh, well, uh, there's been a lot going on this last week. Uh, a lot that the Blue Star Mothers are involved in so many different things. So, Karen, would you like to start off with some of our local stuff that we've done this past week? Well, we did the uh, Red Dirt Run for a uh, wall of honor and our fallen heroes and that was saturday we had to be out uh at our water stations at seven o'clock and there was a lot of pr participation out there it was foggy and it rained off and on but you know our soldiers go through so much that was a piece of cake for us we don't mind getting a little wet for our fallen heroes that's true you know that's very true and then true. brenda needs to tell us about her trip to washington <laughs> dc yes well it was quite the honor. I was chosen to be the patriotic instructor for our nationals and um, so I got to carry the American flag in, in the parade, which the parade actually is not a parade, it's where you go into um, the, where the president speaks. Um, I forgot the name of what it's called. It's like a great big open deal with a lot of seating and everything and so anyway we were surrounded with secret service and we were surrounded by thousands and thousands of people but you know it all went awesome the best thing that anyone could ever do and what an honor and I was probably about 50 to 75 feet from the America or the United States president Wow, that's great. So it was awesome. And, and I was so blessed to be with my other Blue Star mothers, uh, the national president, Judy Dorsey. And we had Teresa, and uh, she's from California, and she's a blue and gold star mother. She is so much fun. And then we had Teresa Sumners, who is our Washington rep, and she was there and Melissa Farmer, who was our wonderful photographer. I can't wait to get the pictures. But we also went to do all the other memorials, you know. Like at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. In, right, we, in we laid a wreath, yeah. you know, for the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. We went to the, um, to the Vietnam Wall, and we was honored to be walked through between all of Rolling Thunder who lined the rows just on both sides. Um, there was no place to get, I mean, thousands of motorcycles, thousands of people. And the blue or the Gold Star Mothers went first, which for y'all that do not know, a Gold Star Mother is someone who has lost their son or daughter in duty and, or while serving. And yeah, you do not want you you don't want to go blue to you gold. don't want your that blue is the to ultimate turn. sacrifice right and then the gold star wives was in right behind them and then the blue star mothers followed but you know I cannot explain the awesome feelings that you have going through that it brings tears to your eyes the wall of honor so. ceremony out here at the veterans park out at uh, Woodring uh, they 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 honored all of the fallen, but this year, from Memorial Day to Memorial Day, we didn't have a Gold Star family, and mm -hmm. that is a wonderful feeling because there have been so many over the years mm -hmm. from Oklahoma, and they honored the, the fallen of the World War II because of this the, being the 70th year mm -hmm. of, of D-Day, you know, and everything. Right. 
and the ceremony was just wonderful and we had seven names that uh, had been returned the POWMIAs to put on the Vietnam Wall, our 80% mm -hmm. replica of the Vietnam Wall out at Woodring Park. So mm -hmm. our VVA guys, our Vietnam Veterans of America chapter here, put those in the DAV, and I think there was uh, um, some others there. There was seven mm -hmm. guys that, that put those names on that wall because they have to go to the right panel and the right, right column and, you know, the right line and all of right. that. So that was, that was quite quite a closing but you know for the families that that deal with the pow and mias mm -hmm. that their their uh, their low one has not been returned exactly and we still have 32 in oklahoma missing mm -hmm. you know it's it's so hard to explain but uh, it wasn't just the rolling thunder that was there there was the run to the wall there was so many different bike groups and it's all in honor of our falling. Yeah, I know Flames Across America mm -hmm. and the probably Christian Motorcycles right. and uh, all the over. Patriot Guard that mm -hmm. always protect mm -hmm. our funeral families, our Gold Star families at the cemeteries and stuff. Exactly. You know? And there's just so many people over mm -hmm. America. I know we have over, what, 7,000 Blue Star Mothers? Oh, yes, yes. Over, over mm -hmm. across the nation. And I'll tell you, uh, another thing that kind of got me um, you know anytime you go into Arlington it's a beautiful um, precious place to get to go and just to see how many of our men and women have given the ultimate sacrifice but I'll tell you what yesterday or Monday after we done our services and everything um, they was giving out roses everywhere and so we we each got to take roses and we went to section 60 which is the current the most current killed in action and i looked for the you know chris haik and i looked for um a storm S story is story here at the enid cemetery okay mm -hmm. i forgot about that but i'm telling you um i could not find them but we did get to go and we got to lay the the roses on whoever we wanted to so if i found one that did not have any roses i placed it on the headstone but i'm telling you it it was just amazing but it's heart-wrenching too because you see the mom and dad sitting there with their soldier and you see the wife and the the mother of the children sitting there with their children and it just breaks your heart. You know, our land of the free and the home of the brave, you know, um, it, it, it is, it is something, I, you know, and, and on a note too, you know, so many, every day we should thank our veterans, exactly. fallen or living, you know. Exactly. And uh, some of the things that was posted on Facebook about, well, thank you, like to my son, and my son responded, no. Veterans Day is about me. This exactly. is about our fall on the ones that didn't come home. That is so, so very true. And you know, we we both are so thankful for our sons who served. Right, right. And you know, uh, and they gave a lot of their lives. But you know, the ultimate sacrifice is just something that we all have to be so thankful that we are not a part of. Yeah, that they all came. So, you know. But, you know, I could sit and talk about this all day, and it's very right. emotional, and um, I'm just so thankful, so thankful for the opportunity to do this. I believe our next thing at, at is Flag Day out at the, the Wall of Honor East of mm -hmm. Town at Woodring Airport, and um, it, it was, it's called Rose Day, right? where you can put a flower at the Vietnam Wall, or you can uh, lay a rose uh, uh, somebody you know on the Vietnam Wall right. or um, you know or in honor of uh, someone you mm -hmm. know and uh, they usually have that Flag Day weekend. Mm -hmm. Isn't that on Father's Day also? Uh, yeah they celebrate that both you know, Saturday kind of and Sunday right? Together okay. yeah I think it's Friday Saturday and Sunday okay and it's a lot of it is for uh, the the children Mm -hmm. of fathers or mothers you know that have fallen and things right. like that which is right. a good thing as far as fundraisers do you know of anything oh my gosh i think we're kind of 
slowed down right now. Um, we do need items in the room though. We really do. We're not sending a lot of boxes, but the ones that we send, we still want to make sure that the ones that are serving are still receiving what they need. Right. So we still need the eye wash, the uh, uh, bug uh, not the spray it can be the bug lotion mm -hmm. uh, it can be those little bands that you can get uh, any type of beef jerky any type of snacks no chocolate this time of year um, just and, and the moisture wipes are really important too. right and socks black socks and sunscreen mm -hmm. Yes, that's what I was trying to say. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Karen. Um, but, you know, there's so many things that we need to continue to do. It seems like uh, the the war is over, but we still have our men we and women serving. We still have 10,000 troops in Afghanistan. Right, and they're still in harm's way. Mm -hmm. So we want to continue to to uh, take care of our troops and also our veterans I know at you know what we have mentioned at Christmas time and things we do for veterans in our nursing homes mm -hmm. and and uh, toys for tots I mean there's a lot of things that uh, that uh, veterans do for children and things mm -hmm. too but um, our fundraisers you know we did the O'Keens uh -huh. kind of, I think was our last one and then right. the, red, the Red Dirt Barbecue and that and uh, we appreciate everything everybody exactly. does but I think this end of the May and the Memorial Day it's time mm -hmm. to thank our oh, fallen yes. heroes exactly. for keeping our land free exactly and you know um, just remember the family members who are left behind and the wives and the mothers who are going to grieve the rest of their lives. Please keep them in your prayers. Keep our troops that serving in your prayers. Um, we need to support them always, just like the Vietnam vets. They need our support so much. And I'll tell yeah. you, they will give you anything that you need if you're in need. There is That's nothing. True better than a veteran that's true that's true they are so, so caring and, and about brother and sisterhood and everything that's right. you know they may not be blood related but they're related they're some brothers. way during their military service that's right with the other military that that's they're, right. they serve with and something else and i should have mentioned it earlier and i know we're running out of time but the women that serve mm -hmm. oh my gosh the stories and the women that you know that they was in Vietnam they was holding the hands of our soldiers as they was injured they was going through it all one of the ships had nurses on it and there was 700 beds can you imagine taking care of all of those men and women yeah oh my gosh but anyway for our local we need you moms we need names. If you have anyone serving, please get their names to us. Yes, we don't want anyone to go without this serving our country. And you know, we need to pray a lot for, for our country and uh, all the situations going around the world. But you know, without our military, we wouldn't be the land of the free and the home of the brave. Yes, and you know, we, we're so thankful. We're so thankful that we can walk around and be safe because of our military and thank God every day for what we have. And you know, we've got to wind this up, so I would like to say my thanks to everyone who helps the Blue Star Mothers. Anyone who gives, whether it's a quarter, or whether it's hundreds of dollars you know we're so grateful for you is there anyone that you would like to I bring up? I just would up? like to thank everybody for for uh, um, you know all of our uh, Red Dirt Run and that came to our ceremony at the Wall of Honor and you for representing us in Washington DC. Well thank you it was an and honor. all of our Red Veterans organizations we kind of mm -hmm. all work together and it's just a wonderful thing. That's right so thank you so very very much and we hope to see y'all next time. Welcome to Community Talk. My name is Chip Baker and this is Keith Saragusa sitting next to me. Today we're here to kind of tell you about a 501c3 nonprofit that we have in town called Benny's Barn. Benny's Barn was incepted about a year ago. Um, been worked on a little bit prior to that. Uh, what we do is a ray of horse therapy for 
um, children and adults with different abilities. Um, what our main focus is are the children and adults. We also do veterans of war with PTSD, any mental or physical uh, different ability that they may have that they may have suffered from the war. A little backstory on Benny uh, and why we call it Benny's Barn is about eight years ago my wife and I moved to Texas. Um, when the market crashed we lost everything we owned. So we came back to Enid and around family and a great support system. Well we happened to meet Benny Mullins who a lot of you may know who kind of gave us that chance and uh, helped us rehabilitate ourselves by the meaning of us not having a job, allowing me to work at the farm, uh, hiring my wife who is now the executive director of RSVP and she just gave us that outlet and a re-entry back kind of into society. So through our therapy program we want to give those children a chance to showcase their different abilities. Just kind of how Benny gave me and my wife a different way to showcase our abilities. We want to help our community grow and develop things like this. Uh, Keith over here, I'm going to have you tell us kind of some stories about maybe some of our clients or something personal that maybe has touched you or why you got into horse therapy also. Okay, when I initially got into horse therapy, it, it sort of happened by accident. Um, my oldest daughter ran equestrian riding since she's was the age of six years old. Uh, she's 20 now, straight-A student in college, so I've been around horses since she's been in school and doing the equestrian. My youngest daughter's 10 now, and she's been riding for four years, which reintroduced me to the horses. Um, being a sufferer of PTSD myself, I had a really dark day one day and went out to see my daughter and my, my horses and something clicked. S something brought me out of that dark place and it was one of my horses and it was like nothing other than I experienced before. And that triggered me to start looking into providing equine therapy for others that have PTSD and or limited abilities. Um, then I got introduced into Path International, which is a professional association of therapeutic horsemanship, which led me through the path of my mentoring through Sunset Therapeutic Riding Center in Yukon and my mentor instructor, Jennifer, who introduced me to a whole new array of teaching and therapy. Awesome. What... Uh what kind of brought me and Keith together kind of as a backstory is I was looking for something to change this community and so was Keith unbeknownst to me. Uh, I happened to be talking about a program that I was wanting to start one day and kind of go after it and somebody had said, hey, well you realize Keith Saragusa is also trying to do the same thing. Uh, so his time in his life and my time in my life, we were able, God had kind of brought us together and allowed us to flourish this because with his extensive horse knowledge and with the help of you know others and my business knowledge and trying to get things set in this town we click so well we train horses very well just God put us together at the right place at the right time um, and God's opened a lot of doors for us to allow us to be able to do do the things we're doing out at our at our farm um, would you like to tell maybe a story about one of one of the clients that that we service um, about maybe our lesson that we may be doing this afternoon. Well, we have we have a young boy. He's 11 years old. His name's Braden. Braden's got cerebral palsy, multiple sclerosis, and a few other underlying problems from birth. When Braden came to us, he was definitely had very weak core value muscles. Motor skills were very weak. His head hung very low. First time we rode him, he was irritable on getting on the horse, something new, very scared, but we went through with it. By the end of that first session, he only held his head up for maybe about four seconds on his own, very weak. And um, 
But the one thing that his mom said when he got off of the horse was the first time she has ever felt him wrap her legs, his legs around her and squeeze her, which that was the starting point. As of last week, he held his head up for 135 seconds on his own. His core muscles have become very strong. He's able to kick his horse to get his horse going now, which he had limited use of his lower legs. And one of the most special things that I witnessed was him taking three steps after getting off of a horse. And it's just something very spiritual about it. And, you know, God's with us on this whole thing and allowing us to witness these little miracles that would otherwise go unnoticed. The horses provide such a great deal to knock down barriers. They provide the, they provide a lot of small muscle movements for the child. The horse walks in a three dimension movement. When it walks forward, it also sways side to side, which stimulates somebody walking but uses more core muscles than the actual person would do walking. And for Braden, this has proved to be tremendous for him when it comes to his core muscles and the fact that he was able to take three steps. And it's just amazing on just what these horses and these children are capable of doing. Well, very well put, very well put. Um, just to kind of give you guys a little more information about where we're located, uh, some contact information. We are actually located at 4914 East Roop. Um, we do, like I said, therapy lessons. We do riding lessons. Uh, we always need volunteers to help us with horse maintenance, which is quite a bit with just the two of us. Um, our contact information is, our phone number would be 580-548-7258, and you can call that number to set up any any type of scheduled appointment that you'd like to come out or just come out and visit or come out and witness a, uh, a therapy session. We, we would love to have you out and kind of demonstrate what we do and show you the everything that we do and the, everything that God's blessed us with we'd like to share you with. Uh, we also have a, a website that is bennysbarn.org. You can visit that. Uh, right now we are fixing to start to kick off a campaign, a uh, fundraising campaign because we are a 501c3 we are going to go out and pitch an enid and surrounding towns we're going to try to get 10,000 people that would residually donate four dollars a month to our program which would allow us to be able to do every veteran and all of Enid public schools and anybody else that came out absolutely therapy lessons for absolute free no charge if we could get 10,000 people to donate four dollars a month continuously uh, thank you for joining us on community talk today if you have any further questions like i said please call or email us at bennysbarnenid.org or call us at 580-548-7258. also like to add one thing that not only do we provide therapeutic riding, we will also provide able riders the opportunity to come out and take lessons from the ground up or from wherever their ability as an able-bodied rider is and to proceed further. Yeah. Good afternoon. My name is Kina Swanson and I work for the American Cancer Society. I am Christy Shapansky. I am the co-chairman for the Garfield County for, uh, Relay for Life. And we are here tonight today to talk to you about what the American Cancer Society can do for you and about our local event, the Relay for Life of Garfield County. Did you know that statistics show that one out of three women and two out of three men will be diagnosed with cancer sometime in their life. Pretty scary statistics, aren't they? So we're here to let you know how we are trying to help you. There are so many great things to share about what the American Cancer Society is doing and how we are spending donor dollars. We have $1.2 million in research right here in Oklahoma City at the OU Health Science Center. 
So when people think about patients going to MD Anderson and the Mayo Clinic and John Hopkins, we're doing great work right here in Oklahoma as well. The overall cancer death rate in the United States does, continues to decline among both men and women among all racial and ethnic groups and for the most common types of cancer because of the cancer research. And we have that research because of the donor dollars. Our local programs are available 24-7 through American Cancer Society Patient Service Center. Over one million people call us every year for trusted advice and to be connected to local programs and resources. Rest assured there's an educated and friendly voice on the other end of the line, even at midnight on Christmas Eve. We have hotels in Oklahoma City and in Tulsa where patients can stay for free or at a greatly reduced rate. We have um, fans in Oklahoma City and Tulsa that can also drive those patients to their treatment if they do not have transportation. We have several facilities that can provide wigs free of charge to any patient going through treatment. The Women's Breast Imaging Center right here in Enid has one of those facilities. We can't give money to each cancer patient because there's just not enough. There are so many people with cancer that even $100 wouldn't cover every patient that has cancer. But what we can do is find financial assistance. Let me give you an example. We had a patient call and is eligible for oral chemo drugs, which work really well with certain cancers and have way less side effects. Because of the work of the American Cancer Society Cancer Action Network, Two of our co-workers got legislation passed that required insurance companies in Oklahoma to cover those pills as a cancer treatment. Those pills cost $10,000 a month. Their insurance now covers them, but still pay out of pocket $2,400 a month. Sounds better, but not good, right? So that patient reached out to the American Cancer Society and the 24-7 Patient Service Center, and they found a, a financial resource, which was probably a pharmaceutical company, that dropped the monthly cost of that drug to $200 a month, from $2,400 to $200 a month. Now that's much more reasonable. That's just an example of some of the advocacy effects that, that the American Cancer Society provides. Anyone that has ever had a mammogram, a pap smear, a colonoscopy, a PSA, or has used the drug Gleevec, Herceptin, or Tamoxifen, just to name a few, have all benefited from the research that was done and made possible by the American Cancer Society. If it wasn't for mammography, the tumor that my mom had, she um, would not have been found. She had a double mastectomy, she had three months of chemo treatments, and she took tamoxifen every day for five years. And now I'm very happy to say she is a seven year cancer survivor. People always ask how much of the money raised goes to pay the management of the American Cancer Society. And I'm very proud to say that that is 3%, much less than many of the nonprofit organizations out there. In the Oklahoma legislative session that just ended, our American Cancer Society Cancer Action Network workers helped get the law passed that all school sites, pre-K through 12th grade, will be smoke-free 24-7. It used to be only from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. So now when your kids, when you're taking your kids to those sporting events, you don't have to walk through the line of smokers outside of the entranceway. They're also working now to get a law passed that anyone under the age of 18 will not be able to use a tanning bed without a parental con consent. It is a proven fact that 15 minutes in a tan tanning bed increases your chance of getting skin cancer by 75% and the damage of tanning may not show up for 20 to 30 years. So now, Christy's gonna tell you how you, can, how you can help us with our local Relay for Life event. Our local Relay for Life event will be Friday, June 5th at Chisholm Trail Expo Center, starting at 7 p.m. We have 20 teams that are very, very active and they will provide food, snacks, game for the whole community. Any cancer survivors are welcome to come and receive a free t-shirt and walk the survivor's lap. The teams have been put together baskets and items for the live auction that will begin at approximately 8 p.m. There will also be a silent auction uh, items as well. At 10 o'clock, we will turn out the lights and have a luminary ceremony lighting up all the sacks purchased in honor or in memory of loved ones who has battled this dreaded disease. 
We are inviting the whole community to come out and help support our efforts to raise money for cancer research and saving more lives. If you have any questions, you can call myself, Kena Swanson, at 580-227-7449 or, or Christy Schapansky at 580-977-4916. Thank you very much for watching Community Talk.